All right, we're on to page four of the Winter 12 Exam 1 uh, video solutions. And we're going to go over uh, the blood types problem and some uh, problem about traits. All right, so first off, in the UK, 35% of the population has type A positive blood. So consider a random sample of nine people from the UK. What's the problem that exactly two of the nine people have type A positive blood? So here... What we're doing here is a binomial distribution. We have a sample of people, and then there's a chance that the what we want to have happen occurs, and then the chance, the complement, is that it doesn't occur. So in this case, um, we're sampling nine people, and then there's a 35% chance that each of the nine people are going to have type A positive blood, which is what we want to see in two of the people. So if we let X be uh, the... Oh, that looks disgusting. If we let x be the number of people, if I can spell, the number of people if we let x be the number of people in the sample who are type A, then x follows a binomial distribution where n is 9 and p is 0.35. So now, it's simple to find the probability that x equals 2. We just use our formula card. So on the formula card, on the very first page, we have the binomial random variables section, and it gives us the equation to find the probability that x is equal to a certain value. So, let's go ahead and calculate that. So it's uh, n choose k, so n, the sample is 9, and then k is our specified value of 2. And then times 0.35 to the second, 1 minus 0.35 to the 9 minus 2. <coughs> and if we use our calculators to calculate that, we get 0 0.2162. All right, now let's consider a random sample of 90 people from the UK. How many would you expect to have type A positive blood? So the distribution changed a little bit. X is now binomial with 90.35. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the formula card. And it gives us here the mean or expected value as just n times p. So, back here, the expected value of the number of people who have type A blood is equal to n 90 times p, 0.35, and that is equal to 31.5. that you do not round expected values, even though it's impossible to get 31 and a half people that have type A blood, we still report expected values as fractions or decimals. All right, and then part C. Now, we, again, we consider taking a random sample of 90 people from the UK and suppose that exactly 40 do have type A positive blood. How many standard deviations is this observed result of 40 from what is expected? So here now we need to find the standard deviation of this distribution. And this is also found in the same part of the formula card, just right underneath it, as the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. All right. So n here is 90. p is 0.35, and then 1 minus 0.35. All right, and if you use uh, your calculator here, you will find this value to be uh, 4.525. So we have 40 is what we found. What we expected is what we found in part B is 31.5. 
So we want to find the number of standard deviations away this is, or the z-score. So the z-score here is just the observed minus the expected divided by the standard deviation. And if we calculate this out, we get 1.88 uh, about. And that's our final answer. So it's 1.88 standard deviations away. All right, our last blood type question. Your plan is to estimate the probability of seeing at least 40 with type A blood in the random sample. Um, we don't want to do this, though, with the binomial distribution, as that would be a lot of probabilities to compute. So we want to use the normal approximation. But we need to first verify that the sample size is indeed large enough to use this. So we go back to the formula card. And in the formula card, it talks about the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. And sample size being large enough, this is the check we need to see. NP greater than or equal to 10, or N, N1 minus P greater than or equal to 10. So, uh, NP, we calculated this up here before. That's uh, 90 times 0.35, which is 31.5. And yes, that is indeed greater than or equal to 10. The other check is N1 minus P. And that's 90 times um, 0.65, which is equal to 58.5. And that's also greater than or equal to 10. So we have verified that the sample size is large enough here. Okay, let's go ahead and clear the page and scroll on to the next problem. All right, so we're going to have a problem on relationship between eye color and a certain ophthalmic trait. So 300 people were sa selected, and they were studied their eye color and whether or not they have this trait. So the, po or the following results are recorded in this table that we have, and are assumed to accurately reflect the corresponding populations. These are all sample values. So what is the probability that blue-eyed people have this particular trait? So it's the probability that someone has a trait here, given that we know that they're a blue-eyed person. So we're only going to look at this part of the table here, just those who are blue-eyed. So this is the probability of trait given blue eyes. And this is simply uh, the number of people, blue-eyed people that have the trait, divided by the total number of blue-eyed people, or approximately 0.78. All right. And then last question here, to assess whether the event of being blue-eyed was independent of the event of having this particular trait, you compare the probability requested in part A with another probability. And that value, if we check our formula card, we want to compare a conditional probability, as that's what we just found. Um, oh, oops, not this. For independent events, we compare the conditional probability, what we just found, to just the probability of the first part. So probability of A um, having the trait given blue eyes should be equal to just the probability of having the trait regardless of their eye color. So we now just want to compare this to the probability of having the trait. So we drop the condition. We just look at overall the probability of having the trait. And the total number of people that have the trait um, is, oh, not here, it's 120 uh, divided by 300. So the total number of people that said yes to having the trait uh, divided by the total. And that's equal to 120 divided by 300 or 0.4. So here we can see that these are not independent events. All right, and that's it for page four.